Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to color a vintage hydrangea today as part of my fall flowers series all week long in a bunch of different mediums, and I'm going to use Technique Tuesday's hydrangea stamp. And hydrangeas can often be blue, but they can also be all different kinds of colors. And I took some pictures of my hydrangea bush last year at the end of the year, and it was dying, but there was something about the colors that it turned that I absolutely loved. So there were kind of yellowish, brownish, purplish, little tints of green here and there. And I decided I wanted to do that. So I've taken my Stonehenge drawing paper, I've stamped the image one direction and the other so that I could get a sort of a horizontal band of blossoms is the idea for the design. And I'm going to color it with my polychromos and I'll start with just doing one flower at a time so you can sort of see how I'm layering the colors and then we'll zoom through the major coloring of the whole thing after we get a few of them done. But in the pictures that I took of my bush, I noticed that some of the, the blossoms were yellow and then right next to them there would be a little floweret that was more green and then next to that another floweret that was more purple. And they were just like each single flower was turning a different color. When they're all blue, they're kind of just boring. They're all blue. So I don't tend to be thrilled with my hydrangeas when they're all just one color. But when they're really, they each change differently like this as the season comes to an end, there's just something really beautiful about that. And I think fall is a great time to celebrate those kinds of colors as well. And mine is, again, a thank you card. I make lots of thank you cards, you may notice. I throw a lot of those kind of sentiments on there because I'm always thinking ahead for what to send my patrons next. So my patrons are awesome people who support my work and all that I do with a small contribution each month. And in exchange, they get all kinds of inside sneak peeks and I chat with them, I ask them questions, pull them on things, all different kinds of stuff so that... I can get to know them better and they are kind of my test market too to see what it is you guys are thinking. So if you want to be part of that group, you can join over at patreon.com, link in the doobly-doo down below. All right, back to the flowers. You can see I've got, you know, one that's more yellow, one that's more purples, one that's got little green and then in the shadow areas I put a little bit of the purple, but you get that multicolor kind of an idea from each one of the flowers and every single one can be treated separately. You can color them all individually one at a time. Now for a big image like this that has two sets of this whole stamp, it can get really boring for a while. So I'm going to zoom through and color all of them at once as one group. So if you're in a time crunch, you can achieve kind of the similar sort of thing by doing all the flowers at once. And it might even be easier than treating every single flower or floweret as an individual thing. And I'm just going to take each one of the colors and zoom around the entire group of, of flowerets to color them all at the same time. As I've been kind of working through this whole thing too, I was thinking about what I was going to do to join the two stamps. As I was coloring, I was thinking about how I was going to join the two images because I left a gap in between them and I did stamp some extra leaves on the one on the right hand side because when I just had the two stamps kind of turned kitty wampus, they looked still like the same stamp just turned a different direction. So I did add some extra leaves. The one on the bottom in the center on the right hand flower has some extra little bits that I had an oops in my stamping. So I knew I was going to have to fix that. So I had to think up a plan. And at this whole time I was thinking, you know, I didn't want to give up on this, but I, I wanted to, to make it work. So I started by just joining the two flowers with a green area and see how that worked to begin with. And using a couple different greens, all the colors, by the way, are on the blog. So if you want to see which colors I used, then you can go check that out. So I added some of the greens and I wanted to see first if I were to blend them with baby oil or you can use Gamsol as well, then I wanted to see how intense the color would get because some colors get screamingly crazy intense and you didn't expect it. So I didn't want to go too crazy with it before I knew what was going to happen 
with the blending. And the little jar that I have, by the way, I just have some baby oil poured it into a jar and there's a cotton ball in there so that I don't spill it if I knock it over. Saw that in somebody's YouTube tip and that was amazing. I do have a whole video on how I made my jars and uh, you can get a little downloadable labels to print for them if you want. I will link that video at the end of this one. But anyway, doing my blending with my blending stump, the color didn't get really rich and dark for that, that those green parts. And it also didn't get rich and dark in the centers of some of these flowers. So I did another layer of the darker of the two purple colors that I had. And I'm just reaffirming some of the darkest areas on the flowers themselves first because I wanted that to be the primary thing and I wanted the shadow in the center to be the thing that sets off the flowers as opposed to having it take over. So I didn't wanna do that part first. So I'm adding my shadows on the hydrangea flowers first. And then I went in with my green again to see if a second layer of that green was gonna be enough. Cause see all that funky stamping that I've got right there in the middle? that still hasn't really covered it. I, I still can see my bad stamping. I tried to mask it and it didn't work really well. And yeah, there you go. So then I went and I took a darker color. I took more of an indigo. And then I started getting my happy on because I could see that that was going to both set off the flowers because I get this really nice, rich, dark color in the center, as well as it's going to cover all that messy stamping right there. Voila! That was kind of cool to discover that that dark color was going to just cover it up. And then I added a little tiny bit of very, very pale light green and used a dry blending stump to blend that light green into white. And there we go. A little bit more of the baby oil blending stump action and we're all done. The inside of the card has some colored pencil on the bottom of it and I cut the front short so I just get a little strip along the bottom showing a little bit extra of that color and kept it as a really simple one layer card. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you want to check out any of the links for the supplies or the colored pencil jumpstart class or anything, that's all in the description down below here on YouTube or over on the blog. And I will see you again next time because we have another flower video coming right up tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye.